Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the final chapter of the talks program of Art Fair Philippines 2022. Uh, this evening, we have uh, for us today uh, the present, a panel discussion on the Philippine presentation at the Venice Biennale with this year. So um, we're very happy that we were able to catch them there in Venice. And uh, most of them are in Venice, a uh, couple are here. And um, we'll be hearing today everything about uh, what they've been doing and about the show that they're installing today. So a few guidelines, your audio will be muted and you will have the opportunity to ask questions later. So you can type those questions in the Q&A box or you can uh, click the raise hand icon um, in order to uh, ask your question live. So today's uh, panel discussion will be moderated by Yael Buencamino Borromeo. Oh, before I start that, sorry, I'd like to thank our education partners, the Ateneo Art Gallery, the Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and the Embassy of Spain in the Philippines. This is the title of our talk today, Listen to the Loom. And today's session will be moderated by Yael Buencamino Borromeo. She is the head of programs and audience engagement at Lopez Museum and Library. And she was the director of the Manila Museum Summit in 2021. Her professional interests lie in interdisciplinary initiatives in cultural institutions and museum development. She was the founding executive director of Arete, the creativity and innovation hub of the Ateneo de Manila University, and as well, the managing curator of the Ateneo Art Gallery. She contributed to the book, Making Museums Work, a Zero-In Handbook. She holds an MA in Southeast Asian Studies from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. So I'll hand you over now to Yael, who will introduce the other members of the panel today, including her co-curator, Arvin Flores. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you um, to the Art Fair for having us um, and giving us this opportunity to talk a bit about um, what we've been doing over the past year and um, what we're doing now in Venice. Um, before we start, allow me to introduce um, the rest of the team, my co-curator, um, Arvin Flores. If, um, if you have all been keeping up with the gallery tours of the art fair, you would have already met Arvin a few days ago because he is the director of Artery Art Space, an artist-run gallery in Cobao. Um, Arvin has an MFA graduate degree from the School of School of the Arts, Columbia University in New York. He has a BFA from the College of Creative Studies, University of California at Santa Barbara. Um, he is a practicing artist and an independent curator and writes as an extension of his creative and critical practice. Um, the, the, the man from whose brain um, this whole project developed uh, Gerardo Tan, known to everyone as Jerry, works across media from painting, collage, photography, and artist books to video and found objects in room-sized installations. His work deals with issues of representation and conceptual plays. He often appropriates re reproduced images from the world of art and mass media in order to subvert hierarchies and give way to new itinerant meanings. In 1982, Tan was part of the second Asian art show at Fukuoka Museum, Japan. And in 1999, he was the representative of the Philippines to the, Philippi to the first Melbourne International Biennale. His work is represented in the collections of the Cultural Center of the Philippines, the Singapore Art Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Manila, Central Bank of the Philippines, and the Ateneo Art Gallery. His distinctions include Fulbright Hayes Grant at SUNY Buffalo, the Barbara Schollers Arts Associates Award in Buffalo, New York, 44th Western New York Exhibition, the Juris Choice Award from the Art Association of the Philippines, and the CCP 13 Artists Award from the Cultural Center of the Philippines. 
His work has been featured extensively in museums and galleries in Asia, the US, Europe, and Australia. Jerry lives and works in Manila, the Philippines, but right now he is in Venice installing the show. Um, uh, Jer Jerry's co-collaborator in this project, Felicidad Prudente, Fe, as we call her, is one of the leading ethnomusicologists in the country today. Her field of expertise is in indigenous music cultures with a specialization in Philippine music. Having conducted field research around the Philippines over the years, Prudente has written and published articles on various aspects of Philippine music, such as epic singing, vocal polyphony, and gong culture. A piano and music education graduate from St. Paul's College, Manila, Prudente pursued graduate studies in musicology with emphasis in ethnomusicology at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, where she was visiting professor in 2004. She served as a music professor at the University of the she serves as the music professor at the University of the Philippines and a consultant at the Philippine Women's University. Currently, she is an active member of the International Council for Traditional Music and its study group on the performing arts of Southeast Asia, where she presents her research. And the youngest member of our group, um, Sami, belongs to the younger generation of weaving artisans of Ifugao province. He comes from a family of weavers who taught him the art of weaving at an early age. Born in 1989 in Banaue, he acknowledges his maternal grandmother, Kitayan Niploy, a respected and well-known weaver in her time, and his mother, Angelina Niploy, who continues to weave using a backstrap loom. His father, Fernando Bule, specializes in dyeing and is a weaver as well. Sammy studied management accounting in St. Mary's University and accounting at Aldersgate College in Nueva Vizcaya, but he decided to pursue his passion for weaving. He now, he now handles the family weaving house and actively participates in textile fairs. Sammy was one of the uh, one of the people featured when um, during the ASEAN summit at the arts and crafts fair that was put up for the ASEAN summit leaders um, and uh, and we're very happy that he agreed to join this team um, join this team for this project um, before we um, before we begin our conversation um, we prepared a video for all of you to give you an idea of what we've been doing over, over the past year. Actually, what Jerry, Fe, and Sammy have been doing over the past four years. Um, may I ask um, Ethan to play the video? Well, it, it started with a trip to Iloilo. I was invited by, by two friends to visit a weaving house and a community of potters. So we went first to the weaving house and as I was approaching the weaving house, I heard yeah, the sounds. Huh? And I was kind of attracted to it because it reminded me of minimalist music. You know, particularly the works of Steve Wright, Tony Conrad, Lamont de Young, you know, these, these people. And as I entered the, the weaving house, I saw these weavers, you know, working in unison and the cacophony of sounds. Got me interested you know, that, that when we left the weaving house on to our way to the pottery I was I started thinking you know there, I could do something with that you know so the idea stayed in me the whole day and that same day I started to think of what I can do with that experience so that's how it all started you know and yeah, I thought of this 
question to myself what if the weaver was weaving the sound that he's creating you know it's like a loop you know? and yeah that's basically the, the the question that got me started and from there i developed the idea this is my first time to do this kind of project where i have to transcribe non non-pitched sound in a non-pitched instrument like a loom it's how do you symbolize the sound a non-pitched sound into symbols so you have to think about what kind of shape and whatever color or whatever shape you want to to use to to represent a sound so you have to invent so that's a challenge i use the usual western staff notation mm -hmm. but of course it will it's not possible to weave that kind of round notes and yeah. so forth so throw it away and invent your own <laughs> field work is first mm -hmm. so you go to a community record and video the weaving and then you make sure that it's clear <laughs> that your recording is good that the, the sounds are good and then start listening to it over and over again so you somehow get the pattern and that's when you start doing your transcription i start usually with the first sound i hear in the recording the first and then as you go over it over and over again then you can see patterns that's where i will start again mm -hmm. the rotation well first i found pe okay. because i was having dinner with a friend mm -hmm. and the mother of my friend asked me, you know, what, what are you busy these days? And I said, so I told her about this project and I said, I'm looking for a musicologist who can do these notations for the project. And my friend says, uh, the mother of my friend said, yeah, I, I know the person uh, who can do that for you. It was Fe, so I sought Fe in UP College of Music, met with her and we talked about it and she says, Oh yeah, let's collaborate on that. So after talking to Pe and Pe agreed, we decided to go to, to Baguio to look for you know the, the right weaver who can do it. But unfortunately we couldn't get one in Baguio, but fortunately we met Ikin Salvador of Cordillera Museum, who led us to Sami. So we went all the way from Baguio to Ifugao and met Sami and that got it, everything started. I was invited by, by Jerry Tan to do something, to do the transcriptions for him. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the start of the project. It's not my, it's not my project, it's his project. Nakapagtapos po ako ng pag-aaral ng accounting, subalit pag-aabi po ang parang Napat, natuntungan ng aking pagtatapos. Nung family namin kasi, it's uh, family weavers po sila. Pagkatapos po, nag, lagi ko pong nakikita yung ginagawa nila. Kaya kung wala akong ginagawa, nagkikipagtrabaho din po ako. And then, until such po na parang nakikita ko po yung ano, yung nahihirapan po yung mga magulang ko, eh, kinakaya, kinakaya ko po ang gawin yung hindi nila po kaya. At saka madali ko po kasing nakuha yung ano, skill eh. Baka, kami, baka nasa linya po namin kasi yung weaving. Kapag nag-start po ako, kailangan ko po talagang calculate lahat at kailangan ko pong pag-isipan kung paano ko po i-execute po yung mga designs. Eh, minsan po kasi kailangan ko mag-adjust po sa mga designs. Kasi yung sa tingin ko po kasi, hindi hindi magandang tignan kung papalabas po yun. And then, ina-accept din po naman po ni Sir Jerry Tan. And then, uh, yung mga sa calculation po kasi ng mga tela, kailangan po ang andun ako bago, sa final, bago po i-finalize po yung, ano, yung sketch po. Actually po, almost three days po ako, three days po na pinag-iisipan kung paano ko po gagawin po yung mga designs po.
Pero kasi yung Tivoli po kasi they are weavers po ng dream weavers po sila eh. Kaya hindi ko po alam pero napanaginipan ko po. Nakala ko po tapos yung Tivoli design. Pero nang umaga po, hindi pa pala na, nasimulan. Pero nakita ko po kung paano ko po ginawa. Kaya doon ko po binase. So with Sami, it was like finely done cloth. And he's not commercial. He's he even thinks of he even talks about dreaming his his you know uh, his processes mm -hmm. with weaving. And so we I I, I found uh, him the right person to to do the the clothes. Well, it was kind of, uh, I would say it was like serendipity, like I, because Pe just texted me one day that she was in Kalinga, Apayao, with her student, whose father was chanting at the time you know, in a ritual. And yeah, I just thought of, I, I texted Feb, I, I told her, could you take a video of his mouth chanting? I don't need a face, I just need a mouth chanting. You know? And there was something about, when I saw the, the video, there was something about the sound that I thought, oh, I could connect this with, with the weaving sound, you know? And uh, ask Fed to make notations of the sound and I can paint it on on some kind of ground where my tongue can be seen painting the notations. As usual, I, I, I start with these uh, vague ideas mm -hmm. and then I slowly develop them. And then after doing them, I just thought that, you know, they're connected actually. I started using acrylic actually, but it was too bitter on my tongue. It took some time for me to think about the proper medium for this. And I thought, oh yeah, squid ink would work because, you know, with squid ink, there's something about, uh, it's symbolical of, um, what do you call this? this um, there's some kind of revelation and concealment, you know. When a squid spews this black cloud, you know, it's, it's revealing something, but at the same time it hides inside that black cloud. So in, in like manner, we're, you know, uh, translate, trans, translating one word to another, meaning is not completely translated, you know. Mm. You, you reveal something and yet you conceal something also, you know. So, I was working around all of those thoughts, you know.
Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome all the panelists um, into, into the session. Perhaps we could um, perhaps we can start with a slideshow and I'd like to ask uh, Arvin to come in and maybe tell us a little bit about uh, um, the concept of the exhibit and you can talk a little bit about the title of the exhibit, the concept and working on the on the show. All right. Uh... And um, uh, uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Actually, uh, I, I think it, it's a very complex project, actually. And I, it's almost cliche to say that, you know, you have to come in the middle of it uh, only because there are two projects all in one uh, with regards to our presentation. Uh, so just to give a little bit of a background, uh, the first part of the project is really called uh, Speaking in Tongue. Uh, which involves uh, like a video installation featuring the Madukayan chanter. And um, Fe Prudente was able to transcribe the chant uh, into symbols, which Jerry Tan had actually performed uh, via painting, uh, as you can see. And um, that's the first uh, part of the, the, the project. The second part would be the renderings and we've seen these uh, interpreted according to the textiles, uh, which are also woven by Sami and Yule, uh, based on the transcriptions of uh, Fe Prudente and also uh, interpreted by Jerry's designs, uh, basically. So th these are two projects all in one, you know. And then uh, to kind of tie everything all together, we called it, uh, and just remember, this was, this was during last year, during the pandemic, we were trying to think about um, a specific title, you know, uh, so that it can gather some audience, uh, relate to the world at, at large, and think about what's happening, you know, when this was during the pandemic. So we came about with this uh, title, Andi Taku Esana Among Taku Disana, which uh, is based on the Madukayan dialect. Um, as performed in the Sogna, which is what the chanter was doing. And translated in English, it's called All of Us Present, This is Our Gathering. So we were thinking basically, it's like, hey, this is an opportunity for us to first represent the country, uh, make some communication with other neighbors uh, around the globe, and also kind of like be, be proud of showing our, our arts, you know? Uh, internationally. And that's how we came about with the title uh, itself. So uh, in terms of its complexity, though, uh, I mean, most people would just immediately see the textiles rendered. Uh, but honestly, the project is also about uh, communication, languages, mutations, and so forth. And so we kind of designed the, the installation to be immersive. Uh, which also involves you know videos and sound um and we had all these deliberations basically if okay if we're gonna hang the, the textiles uh, how can we project um you know like cross cross translations or communication throughout uh presenting a, a series of networks of expressions you know bridging uh different disparate communities all together so hopefully uh, with our presentation, it kind of encapsulated all those complex uh, um, ideas, so to speak. So um, I guess with, uh, further, with no further ado, uh, we can introduce uh, Jerry Tan uh, and kind of begin some of the background uh, of, of his own practice leading to this uh, Venice Biennale presentation. Yeah. Um, can we run? Uh, can we go to the next slide? Can we go to the next few slides? Thanks. Um, this is Jerry's work in the next slide from the uh, from the Melbourne Biennale in 1999. Jerry, can we ask you to talk a little bit about this work and a little bit about your practice um, leading up to this leading up to this Venice Biennale project? I think that. Um, 
people will probably be familiar with your collages and your paintings. Um, I'm not sure if they know the breadth of your practice, um, how you work in many different in many different media, in many different sizes, and with uh, different um, with with a lot of different. Um, I guess, inspirations and manifestations. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this work, Jerry? Yeah, this, this work uh, that we're seeing now is uh, from the first Melbourne Biennale. And in this work, I gathered objects from different uh, groups of people in Metro Manila, uh, of particularly objects, hand-sized objects from, from their homes. And I installed this in grid pattern in the Ian Pattern Museum in Melbourne. And um, these are like a lot of objects, more than a hundred, I think. And uh, these, these objects were, were uh, paired with objects that I collected from, from Melbourne particularly objects from the homes of Filipinos living in Melbourne. As you can see here, there's a box where uh, Filipinos in Melbourne can drop their objects. And later I brought this box with the uh, objects to Manila and showed this in the cultural center of Australia in Metro Manila. So the final show was a show that brought together both objects from Manila and from Melbourne. So there's some kind of uh, communication going on between these objects um, that I've gathered from both countries. And uh, these are like coded messages. And I think this, uh, this also relates to this project that we, I'm, uh, we're, we're setting up now in, Mel in Venice uh, in terms of codes and in terms of communicating through material objects um, that's encoded, you know, and uh, um, can we can we see more photos, please? Oh, this this is also a a piece from the nine, 19, uh, 1999, and this is. Um, Apparition, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's apparition. It's uh, how this. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> if melting, I remember, but but instead yeah. of, of of melting, it's building up. So in 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 an hour or so, you see the the full uh, figure of the Virgin Mary. Mm. So I call this apparition. Yeah, I think the fascinating thing about your practice, Jerry, is um, your ability to uh, use um, material from everyday life and transform it into um, into something that communicates and touches on um, on what people are on on what what the what the society is going through or what the society is talking about, like like in your um, project with uh, the Melbourne Biennale, you um, you took everyday objects, literally everyday objects that people had and people were willing to part with. And it served as kind of a communication, um, representation of, um, of people um, in these everyday objects. Um, and likewise, this apparition, if I remember correctly, this was at a time when um, people were seeing, um, there were reports of apparitions of the Virgin Mary around the Philippines. Um, and you took what is, um, I guess, commonly seen in places like Quiapo, like candles of the Virgin Mary. And, in, and by reversing the burning down process, you made your own apparition <laughs> on that on that um, TV screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's a commentary of, of that uh, what you mentioned earlier on the news mm -hmm. of these apparitions in the country happening. I mean, happening in you know uh, 
some parts in the country where they say the Virgin Mary appeared and you know it's supposed to be mir miraculous and of course I, I view this with a lot of skepticism and um, you know I, I, I thought it you know it's a good material to to explore on and as you you mentioned, you know these these objects that you see in Capo, you know. It, it, Actually, you know, yeah. You know, but but I'm, as as early, yeah. go Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just you know found it. Uh, I, I it's just instinct that I I just use these uh, common everyday objects and use them in my art. Right. Parang, uh, uh, for us, you know, parang as early as this type of work, you know, we were already wrestling with the idea of apparitions, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. in the title alone and also in the, in the process of weaving, there's this push and pull uh, and also like this appearance and disappearance. And there's always like this play about identity uh, being formed and unformed. Uh, something coded and then decoded into something else. So we all kind of saw that in the in the weaving metaphor, which kind of like translated also into the uh, into the installation, into the project itself. Even like I, I know you're gonna talk about this uh, further down, but the idea of, of speaking in tongue itself. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, the inspiration was like you know the, the squid uh, spewing ink to kind of make his escape, you know? And then once the ink is gone, it creates like this vision again. So it's like this in and out type of thing, which is also kind of like language on our part, right? It's like, uh, you also mentioned like language is, is like ideas or all approximations, so to speak. So we're always grappling with that kind of meaning to form uh, in itself. So I'm just noting here, like as early as What's this? 1999, which is the party year. Um, you're already uh, segueing into the, the weaving metaphor itself. No, I mean, and also like the, the Melbourne, the code stuff. Like uh, that's also part of our questioning about the project because we were trying not to be pigeonholed by this ethnographic identification of what the material is. You know, it's something else. And that's where the creativity kind of comes in into the, the whole project itself. So. Yeah, I, I like how you Maybe you can it. go to the next slide. Arvin, oh, I sorry, like, continue, Jerry. Yeah. yeah I, I like how you put it, Arvin, that things are, you know, are approximations. Yeah, I see language like a map, you know, it's, when we translate, it's not really exact. You know? It's more like a guide. Actually, language is, is the one major confusion, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that, that's why we're kind of like bridging it with, yeah. with artworks and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, but as we translate, we also input our subjectivity. Right, yes, very important. In the meanings that we yeah. communicate. Yeah. So t tell us more about this uh, image right here. They look like what? Uh, uh, paint uh, swatches, um, and for me, just looking at them, it it, it talk, does it talk about like di digitalization, uh, rasterization of the image, uh, or once more uh, coding and decoding of, of languages. Um, well, the, the patterns on the on the mirrors are came actually from the from the arrangement of colors in the painting set. Mm. Uh, I wasn't aware of any like electronic signals or anything. It's more like it's more out of convenience, you know, so that I don't have to, to, to compose the picture. So I just uh, get the, the pattern from the, from the way the colors were arranged in the box. Right. So for this work, I, I made these lines by painting, uh, by using a video camera to scoop mm. paint from the palette and apply yeah. it on, on the mirror. 
So there's about uh, there's something about uh, recording the process of painting, some kind of like um, narcissistic, right? Yeah. Sense, you know, yeah. You're painting uh, it with your 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 mirroring painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And co correct me if I'm wrong and, enough. Yeah. And it's painted uh, on mirrors. So. It's Aww. painted on mirror, yeah. yeah. But parang for me, this kind of like shows like a proto sample of, of your uh, notations already. Yeah? Like uh, these in fact are like symbols, you know. Yes, they're codified in particular colors, but the way they're arranged, uh, it's a little bit more like, you know, if I was an alien, I would just read them as some sort of like visual braille thing, you know? Uh, do, do you think there's any similarities to that when it comes to like linearly, linearly arranging symbols in order for it to mean something? Or maybe that's quite a stretch on my part. <laughs> I, I, I will go back to my the manner by which I I apply this this paint, you know, I mean, coming from the arrangement of them in the set, I think it also encodes, you know, the the manner they are manufactured and assembled in the factory. Oh, really? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah and. Uh, I also want to, to simplify the process, you know, and I don't want to create symbols or I don't want to compose them. I just want to, you know, to get the, you know, the pattern from the, how they are arranged in the box. Yeah, yeah. And well, one last, yeah. sorry, one last thing before I move to the next slide. It appears to me, we, we also see like the, the early uh, representation of, of technology here with all this uh, CRT uh, monitors, you know, which I, I think in our Venice Biennale uh, presentation, it, it appears in, in a different way. You know? uh, I just want to point it out, like you're, you're, you're wrestling with technology and tradition, uh, all that is, has been part of your practice ever since. You know, oh, by and, the way, Arvin, yeah, uh, I would like to mention that the images that's coming out from the monitors are the images that's recorded. Ah, okay. On yeah. me scooping paint from the palette and applying mm -hmm. it on the mirror. Ah. These are, these are yeah. images of the process. Okay. Which I think um, recurs. Um, in your work, no, where you like to show the process of um, of your creating the pieces, that happens also in this particular exhibit where the textiles are laid on the monitors. You have the video of the people who originally, uh, well, the original weavers where the sounds came from and then Sammy weaving the textiles that are on display. You seem to, you seem to enjoy being able to show glimpses of the process that mm -hmm. brought your work to fruition. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a self-reflexivity about the work that you do. Yes, that's, that's the precise word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> self-reflexive. And in this mirror painting case, quite literally, because you are, you see yourself in the mirror and in the um, and in the videos that you're showing, since you're the one that's putting the paint um, onto the onto the mirrors. And um, we can go to the next slide. One last thing, Yael. I mean, I, I'm I'm glad that you pointed that out. You know, because. Um, the project also, specifically speaking in tongue, well, also with renderings because of the loom, it's a gesture and all that. Uh, the mirror, you know, you see the body and in the Venice Biennale project, there's also a representation of the body in a different way, in different codes. You know, like for yeah. me, the speaking in tongue itself, 
we were we were hard pressed in like trying to define what it is. Is it video painting? Uh, is it performance? Endure? Is it con conceptual art? What is it? You know. But all that is really wrestling about the body. We're trying to like bring out the the meaning from out of that, uh, from out of language, to make something else out of it. So yeah, and, and I was also thinking if you can use your hand to paint, why not your tongue? <laughs> I'll try that. Yeah. I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but um, but no, but uh, I remember what Jerry said. Use squid ink, not acrylic, because acrylic was bitter when he first tried it for the speaking in tongue piece. Do <laughs> something that's edible. <laughs> okay. Okay, we can go. Do you want to go to the next slide? Um, Ethan, can we go to the next there? Thank you. Um, you can show a couple of seconds of this. I think uh, if you press it, it's a video. Do you want to talk about this piece a bit, Jerry? For... Uh, yeah, this piece is called uh, It's for Painting. I hired three skaters to to skate over a large piece of canvas and mm -hmm. attach on the underneath the skateboard is a small container of paint. Mm -hmm. So when the skater skates around the canvas, the, the paint uh, drips on the canvas and uh, with, with several uh, turns and, you know, uh, on the canvas, the the, the paint is scattered on it, and yeah, this this creates a surface of, of paint on the canvas. And this work, uh, I, with this work, I'm trying to to turn painting into a sight, and more than depicting any anything, it's it's you know making painting a place. I, I think it's um I think it's really interesting how you um in in this board project in in this project the Venice Finale project that you uh, you have an idea and you're happy to collaborate and you're happy to collaborate with uh, other people to help you uh, to help you I guess um, bring to life your ideas um, you yes. seem to have that openness to and willingness to work with others. Despite the fact that you yourself are a painter, you don't feel the need to uh, to do the painting all yourself, so to speak. Ah uh, yes, because for one, I cannot skate. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, cannot I need skate. a professional skater to do it. You know? yeah. like like in uh, in this project now in Venice, I, I needed a professional. Uh, um, musicologist, so I I need to work with Fe Prudente, who's a professional, you know, musicologist who can do the notations you know, in in the, in an exact way, you know, in, in in the way that it should be done. Hindi yung parang nagchamba lang. What is chamba? Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I actually, I'm pretty, happy, I'm pretty happy that you what what well no that that's true. Uh, ch chamba right. chance and a lot of your, <laughs> sorry, Not a lot of your work that. deals with that randomness, diba? That which is also part of the conceptual tradition of just letting well, regardless of the, the idea of everything has to be formulaic. Uh, we go back to this idea of of yours that the idea is an approximation, which is also communication and language. But uh, I, I, I just wanted to cite what you, you said earlier that the, the paint, the, the work itself is like a site um, only because you're creating territories and you know, linear demarcations and also kind of like pushing the boundaries of what the body can do in this instance. So, I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. just. Um, yeah. It, it, I, 
it, I could uh, say that this is, a, this is a form of landscape painting, but instead of depicting it, I make it an actual site. Right. Yes. Yeah. And you're inside the landscape. You're not out mm -hmm. of it, like looking at it. You're inside the like yeah. skater is inside of the, 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 the place, the, the landscape, so to yeah. speak. Should we move to the next slide? And yes, that would be good. Mm. Is that Richard? And this is the other person, Nox. <laughs> this is the, the meeting of Jerry and the person who would bring to life his um, ideas for, for this project. This I... was about four years ago, no, um, Jerry, when you first met Sammy. Oh, no, six, six, 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the next slide, please. Fair. Maybe we can go to you. Can you tell us a little bit about how you, um, how you came to this project and uh, what you were doing before this project? Oh, okay. Well, I was at the end of my teaching, uh, teaching at the University of the Philippines. I was already packing up my stuff and ready to go home to the province and met Jerry at the UP library, I remember. And so he proposed this project. And since I'm already not teaching anymore, so I accepted the, the challenge and um, as a musicologist, I do a lot of field work. So this is also um, is a good project that I can go out again in the field. <laughs> and so that's what I, I, do, I did. We went first to Miagao and then to Cordillera. And of course, the Mindanao to be able to capture, record in video some of the weaving sounds from different weavers. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, is this Sammy's mother? Yes, Moving. yes, that's Sammy's mother, Angelina. Um, is, Sammy, is Sammy with us now? Uh, is he back? I think he got disconnected for a while, but is he back? Maybe we can um, ask Sammy a little bit about um, how he came to working with a project with both of you and how he felt about uh, about um, the, this project. Oh, or is, is he in? I know his connection is is not so great. It's not so great where he is. I think that's one of the realizations of doing this project over the year. While everyone says that everyone is connected through Zoom and 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 online, you realize that there are still many places where it's not as easy to get an internet connection. So. Um, I think Sammy will be coming in and out of the Zoom and yeah. we will try to chat with him when he's in the, in the Zoom with us. Uh, in the meantime, I guess we can go to the next slide. Okay, so that's me with Jose Pangsiu. I knew him many, many, many years ago. Um, I met him in Baguio when he was working there. And then eventually he went home in Tabuk and I followed him there because he's a, a great musician, uh, very steeped in Madukayan Kalinga tradition. He sings, he makes instruments. So when he went to Tabuk, I followed him there through the years, way back in the 70s. So it, it's, it's Jopang Siu who sang the Sogna which which is the the title of our of our exhibition which is uh, quite ironic actually for our group um all of us present this is our gathering because the five of us have never been physically in the same place at one time um, sami is so here for... oh there's sami is here maybe Sammy. we can ask sami okay we sat yes, Hi, Sammy. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, 
how you felt about um, when Jerry and Fe came and asked you to work with them on this project. <laughs> Parang nag nagulat ka ba sa mga pinapagawa nila? <laughs> Naka i-unmute mo Sami. Naka-mute kasi siya eh. Unmute mo yung iyong mic. Yeah. Already unmute. Okay, go. Ikwento mo yung pagkikita natin. Ah, yes. I was introduced uh, by Mama Annalyn, by Dr. Annalyn Salvador Amores. And then, after we met, we already collaborated with each other regarding the project. And then, uh, the rest of the textiles. Mm. We started the uh, I started the weaving with the given uh, patterns, and then after one, after one, and then the next one until the uh, last part. There are twelve okay. textiles. Eh? Yes. Ang kaya ko yun tapo nung nung nag-usap tayo di ba na nung present sa yun na Jerry yung project na to na isip mo. Wow, you have to really think out of the box for this one. Iba to sa mga normally ginagawa mo. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's really difficult. They uh, are different from the traditional weave. Mm. Uh, I really need to think on how to start. I need to study very well. And then uh, about three, three to five days, then I, I already, I am... Uh, I started to uh, proceed with the process. Mm -hmm. It's really very uh, hard because <laughs> it is the unusual. <laughs> unusual. I need to make different computations. Yes. yes. Because I need to make an, uh, different computations and then different strategies uh, before weaving the pattern. Most of the most of the textiles you used a cut no and only one in pinilian, right? Yes. Uh, it requires the design requ uh, requires the design for e cut. The other one is much more preferably for pinilian design. And I think it's only one. Yes, the cowrie sound. Yes, yes. Kasi yung kauri, Yael, yung kauri, mm -hmm. yun ay ginagamit pag pinaplant siya yung tinalak at yung mga abaka mm -hmm. textile. So we thought that yes. it's interesting also to include that. It's, it's part of the weaving of the process, including the ironing of the cloth. And also, okay. add to that, it also produces different sounds. Mm -mm. And mm -mm. I'm anyway. particularly interested in the different weaving sounds that one would hear yeah. from the different weaving houses that we, we went to. Fair, maybe you can talk to us. Sorry, can we go back a couple of slides oh to um, the colored one? Maybe mm -hmm. Fek can tell us a little bit about um, this is yes. the first rendering that you guys did, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, can the you challenge tell us about it and how it relates to the weaving sounds. Yes, the challenge of the project is for me is how do you represent the intangible, like sound, to something tangible, in, uh, and what kind of symbols will you use? So I thought that maybe. As you can see in the projection, the drawing, that you have a solid, solid uh, band that represents, I assigned it as my symbol for loud sound. And then the second one, you have some, some sort of light, lighter band with some zigzag there. And 
I thought that I can represent that as the soft sound because it's lighter. And then the kind of triangular shape that goes to the left and to the right as the sound of the shuttle. So that became the pattern, the loud, muffled or soft, and then the hissing sound of the, of the shuttle. So that's the pattern for the Miyag Ao. Okay. Can we go to the next slide? I think the next slide is how Jerry rendered it so yeah. that the, the drawing of Jerry so that um, Sammy could then weave yeah. it there. That is um, so it's more undulating, then, more refined. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted the black and white skin with gray, some grayish color. And mm -hmm. so this is now the pattern. Next slide, please. Do you want to say something? Uh, next slide, please. Okay, okay, this was our performance. We used the pattern of the Miyagao, the loud oh, sorry. Can you go back to the other sorry, slide, to the previous slide while Fess talking about it? Thanks. If okay. you notice that one, mm. if you notice the one on the floor, that's the woven. Mm -hmm. The woven yag out cloth, which Sami did. And from that, it's like a music score. It is a music score. And so you have the, the black one as your loud sound, followed by something grayish, which is the soft sound or muffled sound also. And then the triangular to the left and to the right. And that's the shuttle sound. So what we, we have here is a, a rehearsal of to perform the pattern, the sound pattern of the Miyag Ao. So we yeah. were rehearsing. The, yeah. the pattern for, that we use for this cloth is uh, the confluence of the pattern that Fed did and I did and uh, the improvisation. Our, our conversation with uh, Sami Bule on what is doable. On, on the on the loom. Mm -hmm. So this involves a kind of uh, like uh, creating, a, creating a certain language by which we could uh, symbolize this uh, or interpret these sounds. And the kind of pattern that's, that the Sami can, can weave on the loom. So we, we, we invented that mm -mm. language. Mm -mm. And uh, for this per performance, um, I made sort of a composition, simple composition with five parts. And uh, the first part was everybody's in unison in that using the Miyagao pattern. And then the second part was interlocking, which is very common in Southeast Asia and in the Philippines, that they interlock each other. The patterns are interlocking. And then the third part, I, it was more improvisation. The musicians can do their improv. And then the fourth section, we go back to unison. And, and aside from that, I put like a drone, drone played by the rain sticks, those girls at the back, the one in yellow and maroon, and Jerry, There's, that's the rain stick. And I use them as drones. To, it, to, to connect the different parts. So this was our first performance of the Miyagao pattern, weaving sounds. So if you notice, we were using scraper, bamboo scraper, sticks, and then the rain sticks also. Next slide, please. Yes, that's the one. After the performance, I made the pattern, uh, the yeah, the sounds, and and then Jerry made it into colors and whatever. <laughs> and what? And um, if you notice the left side, that's the drone. You no, know, that's the three rain sticks and the drone that pieces that um, glues everything together. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the interesting things also about this project that it's iterative, no? After, mm. um, after the three of you go through your process, the textile can actually be read by musicians and they can make their own music from, um, from what you transcribed from yes. the weaving sounds. Yes. Uh, and then a new, a new artwork can be created from that, which is this one, which is called Metro Manila. Metro, mm -hmm. yeah, Metro Manila, because it was played in Metro Manila. Yes. And yes. then you, you then transcribe the performance yes. and this became the, the transcription. Yes, mm -hmm. the pattern. Uh, yes. uh, can you say something about the colors? Yeah, the, the colors for for these patterns were came from from the the colors of the the dress of the performers, like what I did in mirror painting, where the colors of the strips of paint came from the from the colors of the set. So. We had to do this to differentiate the different notes mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. notations. No? So each color represents uh, a musician. And the size of this uh, textile is very big, right? It's very yeah, big. Yeah. It's the largest, and I I recall it the piece de resistance or the you know the mm -hmm. the big. It's a big piece. We call it the carpet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, that's the that's the performance, the video of the performance. Yes. I think we could just click through the slides and we can talk about the slides as we go along. These are the next um, transcriptions and patterns of Jerry. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, th that's my transcription of of um, Kineraya from Antique. Mm -hmm. And um, if you notice, um, I represent again the loud sound with a solid band, and then followed by a soft sound with light, very light, um, light. What do you call it? Light color, and then back to to solid light, and then there's, there's your shuttle sound. So you have this um, loud, loud, soft, loud shuttle. And if you notice on the left side, I indicate the bits. So each, each, each band, I think that it's represented by a half beat and so forth. So merong ano, may duration na kailangan kasi kailangan mo rin yung makuha yung rhythm. Yeah, to me, these this beats are important, this, this time yeah. sequence, because that structures mm -hmm. the image. And this is now the sound pattern of Jerry based on my transcription. Okay, next slide. There. Same thing, that, but this is, um, yeah. I can see, the, the same process. It's but, okay. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, that's the Maguindanao, Maguindanao, where you come from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what's this? Oh, just compilation of my transcriptions. Yeah, I think we could just click through the slides, um, Therese, and then uh, Arvin, do you have any questions for them? That... Yes. So this is the last piece, I think, no? This is the last. This is the uh, rendering 12. The reiteration. The iteration of Metro Manila. The carpet. The carpet. <laughs> yeah, nice. Very nice. Yeah, nice. So this was the exhibit at Vargas Museum. This is the first... Uh, well, maybe the second time that you exhibited, I think Jerry, at one point you exhibited one, uh, you, exhibit, you exhibited the one, one textile and one video, but this is when the idea was really come there, no? 
uh, this is the first time you exhibited all the pieces, not all the pieces, but the first batch of the pieces together. Yes. Just four. Yeah. Just four in Vargas four. Museum. But you already had um, speaking in tongue. So the idea for this, uh, for this project was already, uh, was already taking shape, had already taken shape, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a bit about um, how you decided to install it in Vargas Museum and Cherry? Yeah, I. The way I, I installed this was uh, dependent on the given space in Vargas Museum. And uh, when I look at this now, I, I, I remember uh, skateboard painting, you know, the way I lay this cloth on the, on the ground. And I'm particular mm -hmm. about the same thing, you know, turning something into a place. And I think it was so appropriate for this work because one can go around the cloth while looking at the video of the process. So there's some kind of, uh, you know, um, time is involved in, in viewing the, the work. At the same time, it's also sculptural. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. So I think this is already the, the challenge that, yes, I think that I would say the challenge that we had um, translating from your Vargas Museum show, which was, uh, which was a smaller venue than what we have at the Venice Biennale is that we, uh, we, we, we had to occupy a much larger space. And as you <laughs> said, um, the, the venue or the space that you're given affects the way you install your mm -hmm. exhibition. So we were very lucky that NCCA and the Philippine Arts for Venice Biennale Committee was able to arrange for a mock-up in San Ignacio Church in Intramuros, um, which kind of mimics the size and height of the dimensions of the space that we need to occupy here in the Arsenale. Yeah. Yes, for me, I when, I a, when I install a show in a given space, I want the work to inhabit the space. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, of primary importance to me. You know, it's not just putting something on a, on a wall or, or floor, you know, without, uh, with disregard for the actual space where the work is. It has to inhabit, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's part of the space. That, that's a challenge all the time. So, so th this also means that you have to know how to adjust to the situation or make changes as, as necessary. Arvin, do you wanna talk a little bit about how, how, the, uh, how our ideas changed from when we were first thinking about how we were going to install the show in the Arsenale, the studies for that, and then how it evolved as we were looking at the space in San Ignacio and the pieces when we all had them together versus just imagining them and creating drawings of uh, how we might have the setup. Right. Uh, we, we actually had to remind ourselves, uh, uh, well, not just because the uh, Venice Biennale project is bigger in terms of like the physical location itself, uh, the Arsenale. But in visualizing sound, the first project uh, at Vargas Museum, there were only like, correct me if I'm wrong, like four textiles. So now there's more textiles to be made, uh, more designs, more notations. So it grew bigger and bigger. Um, and, and so even like videos had to be uh, reshot and, and the sound actually had, had um, thanks for, for the crew, to, to Corinne, to, to James, to Blair. Uh, all that was really uh, integral to the whole process. It, be, it became like collaborative in that sense, you know. Um, so yes, you know, it, the, the, the funny thing is like when we're doing the, the proposals, uh, we had all these maquettes, you know. Uh, Yael like made these like beautiful, like handmade 
sculptural maquettes just to kind of visualize the space. Uh, even Jerry did his own, you know, like uh, architectural uh, proportional, you know, scale models, you know. Uh, but even before the the ocular, or even before the the intramuros um, mock-up, we had a lot of like you know like ideas, strategies uh, mm -hmm. involved in presenting the work. Uh, mm -hmm. One key question was like the idea of painting. The idea of painting is like you would like put it, uh, put the works on the wall, you know. But we didn't. We kind of like removed that idea because we wanted the the viewer to be immersed, you know. So it kind of grew from that. It, the, we wanted the, to use the word uh, immersive, sculptural. People could just go around. Going back to Jerry's ideas that uh, a viewer can just go around the textile, which by itself with the textiles uh, laying on the floor, it becomes this institutional critique, you know, so to speak. So, you know, the, the viewer can just kneel down, look at the patterns, kind of like view the, 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 the videos uh, perpendicular to each other. So it, be it became your orientation kind of questioned everything. So during the curatorial process, you know, some key questions were integral to that kind of like, where do we move things, you know, like scale, um, even like duration. Uh, maybe it's, this is gonna be a spoiler alert, no? Because even the sound itself at, at, at the very tail end of the, of the preparation, we were thinking, okay, we wanted the videos and the sound to kind of like breathe, you know, in the way that when you're weaving yeah. using the loom, it's not like a linear mechanical thing. It's more like organic. We wanted to retain that organic feel. Mm -hmm. So the spoiler is that, okay, the, the images kind of filter in and out. Kind of like a conversation, you know, I'm saying something, people could interject and it, it becomes something else. So it became like this organic thing all around. So I'm just gonna cut myself short there because you know I don't want to do like any more uh, spoilers for that. You just gotta have to go to Venice and see <laughs> the installation. Yeah, it will be till November. Yes. Yeah, I I have to say though that um, well, I guess this sums it up. Art is in the process of the process of um, putting together this exhibit. In the, put, the process of putting together this exhibit, we really had a lot of help from different people. Uh, uh, the videos were done by Blair Camilo, who who did the, the video in the beginning. He helped a lot with the editing of the videos. Uh, we had help from like Miguel Rosales and his team to help us think through the layout. We're very happy that we had uh, people like Corinne de San Jose and James Clark who helped us figure out the sounds because the sound um, we wanted, we're trying to develop a soundscape for the Venice um, for the Venice installation, the spaces in Vargas were much smaller, so it was easier to control the sound there. But here, the space is larger; it's more cavernous. Uh, um, we needed to figure out how the sounds of all the weavings and the chanting interact with each other. So uh, we're we were lucky that um, we had these great artists who were willing to work with us also on this project. Um, I think, so the collaborative nature of this project doesn't only, is it only limited to the three artists, but also to all the other people who um, helped us bring our ideas to fruition. Well, let's hope they come out the way we, hope, the way we want them to. We'll find out in a few days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, it, you know, just, just to kind of like add up to, to what you said, you know, yeah. Um, we, we had this this idea, okay, usually when, when you look at art, it's, it's like a beauty pageant, you know, Parabang, uh, things are on the pedestal, you know, pattern statues and stuff like that. And you just kind of like walk back and kind of like in awe and all that. Sure, yeah, the, the, the textile, textiles are beautiful, the, the notations, the drawings, they're all beautiful. But the key thing for us is more like it's it's an evolutionary process, kind of like what Jerry was you know mentioning before: language, communication. It's participatory. You know, it's not just like you 
you stand uh, fixed and you just receive. No, you have to kind of like experience the whole thing, participate. Uh, and in that way, we can build communities actually, uh, not just be like passive viewers. You know? So those are the key things that we were like dealing with the, with the work itself. You know? Parang, uh, how can we make tradition kind of move you know, bring it to the contemporary. Of course, when people look at some of the designs, you know, it, it looks different from the traditional patterns, even though it's really based on the sound of the of the of the looms, you know, kind of like what Jerry was saying earlier, that uh, what if, what if, you know, like uh, the sound of the looms kind of create their own aesthetic, you know, and in that way, culture can can be moving can be integral to our lives now. So, I mean, that's all I could say. <laughs> Thank you, Arvin. We have about 15 minutes in the session. I thought um, as we're continuing our conversation, we can take, um, we can take questions from, from the audience because there's a question here that I see in the Q&A box um, from Princess Grace Bolon. Um, she's asking, um, I believe that to do an amazing art, we need emotions while doing it. Since weaving is an art, how do you think your emotions affect you when you are weaving? Uh, this one clearly is for Sammy. Sammy here. Sammy, can you maybe answer, maybe can you tell um, Princess Grace about how, if or no or no Alasha? Alasha. Either. Either. On screen. The apparition, the apparition, you know, like, you know, you have He's the apparition. Have okay, we can say that, but I know that's what, um, that's what internet connection is like sometimes, like an apparition. It's a miracle when you have it consistent. True. Uh, so, tamo, apparition. Uh, um, I guess we can say that or we can um, have him, we can have him answer it when he comes back in. I think uh, one of the things that we've um, really enjoyed while installing here in Venice is to see uh, how different how different people work in different art settings. Sure. Oh, Sammy's back in. Go Sammy, ahead. hi Sammy. Uh, are you there? Nandaka. Oh. Wala pa, I think he's having a difficult time coming in. It would be it it'll be great when we're finally all in the same room together. True. Maybe in November when we before we close the show, we can all be in the same yeah. in the same space to see the exhibit. Yeah, but but, but uh, let's take a stab at it. I think that the the question itself is very important. Like when we yeah. all, I mean, we're we're all dealing with art, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, so it, it becomes like whether it's painting, video, whatnot, uh, emotion becomes like an integral part of the process. You know, I, I think the question is more like how do you convey emotions in in such a conceptual project in itself? Uh, and I and I think in general. Uh, because of its organic nature. Uh, yes, it's not like, you know, overtly expressive, although arguably, you know, the colors are very uh, vivid and it's, it strings the heart, you know? So you can get there, you can have a full gamut of emotions just to experience the whole thing. But because of its organic nature, the whole installation itself, the project, it's immersive, um, we hope that the viewer would get an emotional response to it. outside of, of being you know, inter, uh, intellectual, um, how do you say this, orientation, going about and experiencing the whole thing, you know. So it's not just emotional, it's intellectual. And, it, and the good thing we like about the project itself, it's ambiguous, it's uncertain, you know. Those words are also very frightening because we don't want to be doubtful you know but i think that's also part of why we look at arts at the arts you know so that we can ask ourselves why are we still alive why are we not like robots 
you know, um, and that's why we look at tradition so that we can learn from it. So all those things are very emotional for me and at the same time, very intellectual. So, well, hopefully that's, that's kind of like the answer. Uh, Sami is there. Hi, Sami. Someone, uh, someone sent in a question to ask about um, to ask about how do you think your emotions affect love? <laughs> emotions. Hi, Sammy. Hello. Oh, Sorry. Someone asked. Okay, lang alam ko mahi mahirap yung signal jan sa inyo. Um. Pwede pa kayang sagutin yung um, yung tanong Ay, tungkol lang. sa... Nagre-reconnect po. Ay, nagre-reconnect. Okay. I think the genesis of this project also, Jerry, no? Um, stemmed okay naman from... po kanina kasi lang nag, nag-fake po yung signal. Hmm. Ay, nag-fail. Okay na ata. Um, sumagot ka na. Ano, how do you feel? Oh, I think it's a little weak. I think that the, 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 that emotions question is quite, um, as Arvin said, is really relevant because even when Jerry started thinking about this project, it was, it was driven by kind of an aesthetic experience. Now, I guess Jerry, um, uh -huh. where you were moved by the sounds that you were hearing. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And in large, in large part, part of the it's also instinctual, you know, you, you just think about it, it hits you, you know, from nowhere. Yeah, I guess, uh, so maybe not necessarily, um, not necessarily uh, emotion, like happiness or sadness, but that kind of um, inexplicable, not, not necessarily rational, um, logical, uh, uh, yeah, start the process. Sometimes you, yeah. you know, it's only after doing the, 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 the work where you start to see how logical your thought was. Yeah. And you know, uh, you know, Jackson Pollock is a sadist that he doesn't know what he's doing, but it's only after painting that he starts to realize what he's done. And I, I believe in that. Yeah. Sammy, um, my question for you about what's the most um, what's the most exciting thing when you start to weave? <laughs> exciting. Uh -huh. Exciting when you start the best time or <sighs> yes. It's uh it's the best timing. Yes, uh I start weaving when my mood is okay. And then uh, when the weather is good, it's not that very hot, but it is uh, just the normal in my, uh, temp in my uh, the way how I feel. And that's it. Uh, it is difficult to start uh, when your mind is not uh, comfort. Uh, when you have a heavy, when you think too much, when you are not a, uh, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I said you every Thing that you weave everything you don't write down your you don't normally write down your patterns no i mean like yung patterns sa binigay sa ni jerry um hindi mo sinusulat yon na parang five threads and then six five threads and then move the shuttle six threads parang it's very instinctive also the way that you do it you already know how you're going to do it without having to write down instructions for yourself. Uh, 
Usually po hindi po ako nag ano, hindi po ako nag-i-sketch because uh, I need to kailangan ko pong uh, baguhin right away. Kailangan ko mag-switch kung kailangan. And then for part, some parts of the signs, uh, you really need to uh, make varies, varies with your the way how you make the design. You, you do not stick with one uh, techniques, but you need also to learn while you are working. Yes, that's it. I think the um, seeing how the three of you work together, I feel like the creative process uh, was the okay, All three of you had to had to expand your regular repertoire or the normal things that you do. Uh, you had to think out really outside of what your normal practices for this new project that Jerry brought about. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to just maybe as we wrap this up, uh, maybe Arvin has a question also, but I also wanted to get a sense of how this has affected everyone's practices since it's not your, what you normally do. Arvin, any parting questions for them as well, since we have about five minutes left? Oh, yeah, you, you asked the most difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> but but we all want to know if, if, if the sound... Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I did not get that question. <laughs> this stop. Oh, yeah, sorry. My, my question personally was, was that, was, and I'm being funny here, it's like, did the sounds make uh, Jerry dance and, and also Fe and Sammy, you know? Uh, that's, that's a very emotional uh, uh, thing to do, you know? Did it make you joyful and happy to make the next iteration itself, you know? Um, for me, joy, joy is, is very you know, important, you know? Uh, we add a, a grain of, of doubt and some humor into the project. Uh, we don't claim for it to be perfect. Actually, it's more you know, interactive, and we kind of enjoy all that. So I, I'm I'm putting the question to the Sir Jerry. Did it make you dance? You know, in, in that sense. <laughs> yeah, it made me do a moonwalk. A moonwalk. Okay, I'll do that with you. You know, uh, but we'll do some some uh, break dance when you when we see each other. All right. <laughs> I'm just being funny. Yeah. Maybe, maybe after a few bottles of wine, Jerry will do the moonwalk. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. But for me, it's a very fun feeling because it's something different from the music that, that I often do. And um, yeah, it's, it's a once in a lifetime experience, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy, um, um, paano kaya na affect yung yung um pra, yung practice mo yung mga weaving mo dito sa mga pinapagawa ni Jerry at ni Fe dito sa collaboration yo na yeah, right. na na inspire ka bang gumawa ng mga bagong klase ng weave or na pagod pinagod ka nitong dalawang to <laughs> Can you hi? There's a third question. Sammy. Yes. Hi there. Tell so, Sammy, um, how are you affected by this um work that Jerry and Fe asked you to uh asked you to participate in? Uh, it was just challenging because uh, it's different from the usual traditional weave. But uh, I just need to adjust. Uh, I need to make some more adjustments on the way how the pattern was uh, made. And then I need to execute the designs. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the first time that you see that, you saw the design, but uh, after studying it very well then you i can you can 
Ah, uh, execute already the design. Pinagod ka namin, Sami? Ah, hindi po. <laughs> It was just uh, really uh, uh, something different. Mm. Thank you. If, if I may add something not to what I've said yeah. earlier. Um, I'm already talking to Fed about continuing this project. I think it, this project should not stop with, with the Venice Pinale. It, to me, it, it must continue like a drone. You know? <laughs> and the, the iteration should continue. It should go on and on. You know? And make, make the work more expansive you know, as, as far as we can go. That's the idea of the work. So you're saying Sami has more work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, um, on, on that note of hope and continuity, I think that um, I'd like to thank um, everyone for uh, for being on this for for talking about the exhibit. It's nice for the five of us to actually be able to uh, chat with each other, even if we're in different parts of the world. Um, like to thank you. It was very hard to find a place to get a connection. Thank you so much for joining. Um, thanks, Arvin. We look, uh, thanks, Jerry and Fe. And we would like to extend our thanks to um, Lisa, Therese, and the tech team for their help with um, for their help during this talk. And I. I would just like to mention the theme of the Philippine art for Venice Biennale, who has made this process um, much easier than it could have been. Uh, we had a lot of difficulties because we were all working from different parts of the world and their assistance in helping us do a mock-up in Manila before we actually had to set up here in, in, in Venice was a big help in um, concretizing our plan. So I'd like to thank um, the, the team of Maria Brihima, Philippine Arts for Venice Biennale, um, Mappy, Jean, and everyone for all their help with um, this project and their unfailing support. Uh, with that, I will turn over the screen to Lisa so she can say her Thank you and goodbyes as well. Yes, thank I want to everybody for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Yael. Um, the, thank you to all of you for bringing to life uh, what you're trying to do in Venice. Um, it seems to have truly taken a village. <laughs> it sounds like there's so many people involved, and that's great. <laughs> and um, uh, I. I Good luck with the installation because I've just seen on Instagram some views of the of the space in the Arsenale and it's quite huge, isn't it? <laughs> so good luck with that. Anyway, before we go, may I ask for a photo, please? It's just our form of documentation. So if you can give us your best smiles, Therese, perhaps you can count down. Hi, yes. Uh, please give us your biggest smile. Three, two, one. Smile. One more. Three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Yael, Thank you. Fair, Jerry, Arvin, and Sammy. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thanks, <laughs> Before we go, I'd like to thank again our education partners, the Ateneo Art Gallery, the Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and the Embassy of Spain in the Philippines. Uh, this evening's talk marks the last chapter of our program of talks in Art Fair Philippines and also the end of the fair. Thank you to everybody who has participated, not only in the talks program, but also uh, visited the fair and visited the galleries as well. Thank you and see you in 2023. Good night.